everybody. I am working on, yes, yes. I'm trying to make sure my technology is working good. How are you guys doing? Hey, Debbie. Hey, Carolyn. How are y'all? I'm working on technology, and I think I got it figured out. Okay. So, yay! You guys are here. Gonna do flamingos. Gonna do, a, it's gonna be kind of like what we've done in the past on our other group, except I'm gonna be more detailed. I'm gonna slow down, I think. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Jan. How are y'all? Y'all doing okay? I hope you're doing good. Um, and just gonna kind of spend a little more time. Uh, what I really like doing is being in the teacher mode, so to speak. So anyway, gonna work on this flamingo and this one. So I'm kind of gonna do them both at the same time. They're so similar. I've already laid down just one quick um, face coat just to kind of get started. The thing about doing what we do, doing yard art, it just, uh, you have to put a lot of paint on there. So sometimes trying to get everything done in a time frame that's going to be good where I can get it done in a certain amount of time and you guys, and it not be too, too long. Hey, Lynn, how are you? All right. Okay, so the first thing I'm starting with is the number 26 shading uh, pink. I'm going to do that now kind of as my background on my flamingo. This is a uh, three-quarter inch mop brush. We got some in the other day. Uh, this is a Cotman. As far as I know, this is the biggest mop brush that Cotman makes. Um, this is your three-quarter inch, and this is your five-eighths. So they are different. Um, I, think, I think we have both of them at the shop right now. But anyway, so this is what I'm working with. Um, and it's just, I like the three-quarter inch because I'm going to have to put a lot of paint on here. So I'm going to kind of dip my paint in here. And I'm not going to, I already have some pink on here, right? So when I'm doing this, uh, I'm not going to focus on getting that dark pink on the circles because I know my circles are going to be the light pink. So my focus right now is really just focusing on getting that paint in between. You know, and it's okay if I cover up some of the light pink. I'm going to come back on that in a minute. But my focus is really kind of getting on this, um, the darker pink where I want it. And so right now where I want all that, is kind of around the light pink. So there's no sense in putting all that paint again on that light pink and then come out and putting light pink on top of that. That's just kind of a waste of paint. Uh, so what am I doing? I'm kind of dipping my brush in here. And I am putting, I don't know if you can see this part, but I am putting a lot of paint on there because it's gonna take a lot of this dark color to cover that light pink. And I just used light pink in the beginning because that's what I had. And um, I didn't have a whole lot of the dark. You could just go ahead and start with the dark if you want. That's fine too. There's no right or wrong on that. So I'm just kind of putting a lot of dark on there. Again, this is that 5 8 inch mop brush. Okay. All right. Yes, that's the one you want to get for glitter. This is that. I'm glad you brought that up, Debbie. Next month, we're going to be doing a lot of um, Christmas glittering stuff. And if you're going to do glitter with me, uh, it's going to take a lot of paint. And in order to lay down a lot of paint, you, want to, you really want a mop brush. Okay. What I'm doing, I'm going to pour out some paint on here because I'm having a hard time getting enough paint on there. So I'm going to come back over here. And what I'm going to do is this is obviously going to be really, really wet. So I'm going to put it under my um, ceiling fan. Now in my shop, I actually, in my art room, I actually have three ceiling fans. I had to look and see how many I have. And it does make a difference in how quick the paint is going to dry. It's just because it's moving air around. If you want stuff to dry, you're going to have to move the air around. That's just the way it is. And... Uh, so in a minute, I'm going to turn on the ceiling fan and put this under the ceiling fan and work on something else. And while this is drying, I'm going to uh, work on something else and then we'll come back to it. So I'm putting, I don't know if you can tell, but I am putting a lot of paint on there. 
And uh, it's getting kind of splotchy here and there, but I'm not gonna worry about that. I can always come back and cover that a little bit. And uh, I'm gonna go around here like so. And I am doing my sides in this number 26 shading pink. It's the darkest pink that we have, or the brightest, however how you wanna say that. I'm just coming in here with that brush, going like so. Let me go this way. Putting a lot of paint on there. So I almost have all the paint, the dark pink that I need. Not quite, but almost. And I just kind of miss the light shading circles or the light pink circles. I just miss those. Just trying to leave them alone. All right, gonna put some pink on there. Now, I'm gonna set this over here under the ceiling fan. There we go. And we're gonna work with this guy. Same concept right here. I'm going to um, put a lot of dark pink on this guy. Flamingos are always a hit. Usually people like flamingos. Now this is gonna be the white part between the, the bill and the neck. He's got his neck kind of cowed down like that. So uh, this part right here will be white. And then I'm gonna do this yellow on the bill. So let's see, gonna put some pink on here. Now this one, I've already got steaks in it and the other one I, I did too, but you gotta kind of be careful. Hey Renee, how are you? So glad you're here. We uh, spent a lot of time today doing Christmas trees for Christmas season and uh, I enjoy them, but man, they're a lot of work and after a while they get heavy because they're 66 inches tall, you know? So, uh, but we got a lot of work done, so that was good. We were, we're closed on Mondays at the shop, but that doesn't mean we're not working. We may be closed at the shop, but that doesn't mean we're not working here. So, all right, so I'm gonna kinda come in here and I'm just using that mop brush to put a lot of paint on there. Kinda let y'all see that. Just kind of dabbing that paint on the sides. And I want to get way down here in that neck as well. Sometimes, I, most of the time I come from the top, but if I can't reach it from here, I'm gonna move underneath here. Just kind of stand it up a little bit. All right, but I think I have a lot of pink there, so that's good. So I'm gonna just keep going with putting paint on here. That's all I'm doing. Y'all hear the doggy door? That's my dogs coming in and out. Yes, over the weekend, Ashley went to uh, Louisiana. She was supposed to get married in Jamaica, but you know, the whole COVID thing happened. So she's kind of bumming about it. Can't blame her. So I, I officially have a son-in-law now, which I think is super awesome. I love him to death. He's just a great guy. He's, and that's, I feel very blessed. So, all right, let's see. Okay, so I have my dark pink there. I'm just gonna put this in the water. I'm gonna put that lid back on. And one thing I'm gonna show you is this is my water bucket, okay? So this is my bucket, and if you notice, I have a number of, um, just the one I just put in here, but I've got a number of brushes in here today that I used. 
So I put a lot of water in this top and this uh, right here. You want it to where that water is all the way to the top. Why? Because you want you want these brushes in here kind of floating a little bit up off the bottom of the floor, okay? Uh, so you want to make sure that that brush, I'll use this one, on the bottom of the floor isn't doing that. And if you don't have much water in there, it's really easy for the brush to sit here like this. If it sits here like this, then that's not gonna be good. So whatever bucket you use, it really doesn't matter what you use. This just happened to be what I use. I would make sure you fill it to the top so your things can just kinda, of, they won't be sitting really, really hard on the bottom, okay? So that's something I've always done. My mother-in-law passed that to me many years ago. She's the one that shared that with me. Okay, so I've got another mop brush. And this is number 25 light pink. It's already the pink that I have right here. Okay, and I'm just putting, this is a 5 8 inch brush. Somebody said, does he like painting? Uh, no, he doesn't. <laughs> he leaves all the painting to her. He does a lot of things to help her, but that's not one of them. So I'm just gonna come back in here and make my pink spots a little bit pinker. I mean, a little bit better coverage. That's all I'm doing, just putting some pink on there. With my, this is a 5 8 inch mop brush. And uh, I think if nothing else, if you've not painted a lot of yard art, uh, some of you've not painted a whole lot, some of you have, but I've always found, and I, I think it's because we cover big spaces, typically yard art's bigger than a lot of other things. You, you just can't live without a good mop brush. I mean, it just makes a big, big difference, so. If you invest in buying one, just make sure you keep it clean using that Murphy's oil soap. But uh, I think the trick is, is just it puts a lot of paint on there, which is really what you want. So I'm going to kind of come up here. I'm going to come over here. And of course, this is just the way I'm doing it. doesn't mean you have to do it this way. Just so y'all know, I'm, I'm a member of another group that I'm learning how to do some other painting, I mean, uh, some other things uh, digitally. And so, um, in that group, I'm like, hey, Katie, how are you doing? In that group, I'm like, oh. uh, and Katie is a girl that's really been helping me a lot, learn a lot of things digitally. And uh, Katie can attest to the fact that, yes, I know what I'm doing in the paint room, but not in some other areas of life. Uh, yeah, you got to use a lot of paint, Debbie. And if, uh, if, here's another little trick, because I'm glad that came up. Or I'll do it on the green grass. I'll show you something in a minute. Um, what do you use to clean the brushes? Murphy's oil soap and water. That's basically it. And make sure you don't use hot water. You can, you basically, you're going to use um, cold water. You don't want a lot of hot water on these brushes. It's not going to be good for the bristles, and it's really not good for this part. Um, so you want to keep it to cold water. And Murphy's oil soap. That's all I use. And, okay, so I've got my pink on there. Now, remember I told you in the very beginning how I have one over here that I'm letting it dry. I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to let this other one dry. And really, I'm painting two things tonight, and you probably can tell even from some previous videos that we've done, it doesn't take a whole lot longer to paint two of them than it does to paint one once you kind of get the hang of it. Yes, it takes a little longer, but not twice as long. So, it does not take twice as long. So, okay. I'm just putting a little pink on there. That's what I'm doing. And right here, I got a problem, so I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna come back like that. Right here. Like so got some more pink on there so I'm happy about that now what I'm gonna do I'll show you what I'm doing I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the white right over there right quick I don't want to keep using a, a hundred different brushes hey Kristen how are you um, so I'm kind of going in here and I'm just taking my fingers and I'm cleaning the pink out of that brush let me bring it over here a little bit more where y'all can see cleaning the pink out of the brush that's what I'm doing it's easier to do that on this 5 8 inch brush than that 3 at 3 quarter brush. That 3 quarter brush, is, it, it holds a lot of paint. It really does. 
So I'm cleaning that brush just right here. That's all I'm doing. I'm gonna peach the water back out and I'm going to use some white right over here. Putting some white in here, kind of loading that brush up a bit. I'm just going to put that, that stuff wherever I want it, the, the paint. Wherever, you just kind of drag it to wherever you want it to be. All right, I think that's really the only white I've got on that. So let's go back to this one and let's do a little bit of, how about we do a purple flower on this one? Or let's just do a light blue flower. No, I think this is seafoam green. We're gonna do a seafoam green flower. I'm shaking that paint. I don't know if you can hear it. I'm going back over here and I'm cleaning that white out of the brush just like I did a while ago, okay? I'm just cleaning the white out of the brush. Pinching that, okay. Now this particular paint is, uh, I think it's number seven seafoam green. Let me make sure I'm not telling you a lie. Eight, number eight seafoam green, okay? It's a little bit runny, so you're gonna have to use, be kind of careful with it. I don't know why it is that some paint is a little more thicker than others, and some of it's pretty pretty thin, runny-like. I'm sure it has something to do about the base of it, and I'm just doing this flower. Put a little more paint on here. Yeah, I'm gonna put some paint on here. I'm gonna let that Okay, I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I'm cleaning this. And I'm just taking my fingers right here, cleaning that brush, that's all I'm doing. I've got it all out of there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with this light yellow for the beak. And the light yellow is the number 13. I'm trying to get really good at remembering to call out the numbers and the name of the paint, so that'll kind of help you. A little more yellow back up in there. Kind of coming over here. Okay. So I've got all the yellow I want on there. So I've got a good base on. We haven't done the grass yet, but we will. So let's come over here and do the yellow on this guy. And put some yellow on the beak. And again, this is the 5 8 inch mop brush. And I'm gonna just do the sides right quick. All right, now I'm ready to move on to base coating the grass. So what I'm gonna do is I'm getting a clean brush. <clears throat> and you can't really see it, but I'll show you. Uh, I always paint with a trash can very near me. Here's my trash can, okay? Just what I've always done. So let's pretend for a minute you're in a situation where you're still trying to learn and, and, and figure out how much paint is not enough paint, how much paint is too much paint, and what do I do if you don't have enough paint on there? Obviously, that's a simple solution. You pour more paint on there and you get to work. If you have too much paint on there, what am I going to do? So let's figure this out. I'm going to put a lot of paint on here. I'm going to put too much. I have too much paint uh, on here. <clears throat> and that's gonna happen. I mean, it's just the nature of it. You're gonna make mistakes like that. I've got too much paint. So what I do, because I still sometimes get too much paint and I see some trash in here, I'm picking that out. So when you get too much paint, I'm gonna leave it here for just a minute because I don't know exactly how much uh, too much I have. And I'm gonna kind of just kind of come back here and I'm putting my um, green paint on here, you know, on my sides. Remember I showed you my trash can, something I've always had, because whenever you're painting, you're always gonna use a lot of things like paper towels. I use paper plates a lot, things like that. So if you have too much paint on here, and instead of just making a big mess trying to get a paper towel, which I've done before, take that paint and just chunk it off the side. 
don't know if you can hear it, but it's, it's hitting the trash can below me. Yeah, there you go. I did that on purpose just to show you, you got too much paint if you're on an edge. Now, if you have too much paint in here, then that's not an option. So if you had too much paint right here, you're just gonna have to get a paper towel and just kind of swap it up or sap it up as much as you can. But if you have too much paint on the piece where it's, it, it's in the edge of the piece, you're okay. Pull your trash can there and just kind of throw it off in the trash. That's what I do. Because it's just as bad to have too much as it is not enough. So you want, you want the right amount. And that's not always easy to determine. So I'm coming over here and I'm just basically making my gra uh, green over here on this side, on the edges, I'm painting this green. And I'm gonna come over here and finish this green. And you can tell, I think you can tell by the reflection in here. Hey, Kimberly, how are you? Yes, this is Christmas green, number 11. Good question. Y'all ask all the questions because that's good. It's hard for me to think of everything. Yes, number uh, 11, Christmas green. So I'm just putting some green on here. Okay. There we go. My sister was here. Kelly was here over the weekend, and I was shooting some videos for Yard Art Academy, and um, she was laughing at me. It's like when the video was over, I was like, what is so funny? She's like, man, you're such a teacher. She said, the whole time your hands are moving and your mouth is moving. I'm like, yes, isn't that what I'm supposed to be doing? <laughs> that was her way of saying, hey, not everybody's mouth's gonna run all the time like yours. <laughs> or at least that's how I, you know how sisters are. They can tell you all kinds of crazy stuff. All right, let's see. Joy. Hey, Joy, how are you? So glad you could join us. We're having a good time. Or I am, anyway. I hope you guys are. Painting's always fun to me. Uh, my niece came over late last night from our hometown, and she had done a cross, and she's like, I need help. I hate to make you paint late at night. I was like, ah, it's okay. I paint all the time, by the way. So I've got a lot of paint on here. So I'm going to set it over here under this... Uh, fan for a little bit and try to see if I can get it to dry some so I can finish this before the end of our um, before the end of our uh, okay so here's the deal on this guy I've got two choices I can do this whole thing in gray, and I'm gonna make his legs black okay so I could do this whole thing in green let it dry come back and do the legs black Honestly, that's, that would be the easiest. Hey, Debbie. Oh, it's not Tina. Yeah. <laughs> that's true, isn't it? But because I'm doing a video for you guys, I'm not going to do this whole thing black. I mean, whole thing uh, green covering up the legs because there's a time issue. But let's say I've got six of these and it's hot outside. I would paint this whole thing green, let it dry out in the sun for, you know, half an hour and come back and do the black legs on top of that. But that's not what I'm going to do because for purposes of this video, that would just take another extra time. Hey, Janet, how are you doing? So glad you could join us. That's awesome. So I'm going to put some green on here because uh, I was going to do this guy with no grass. And I got to looking at him and that's just not going to work for yard art because his legs are super, super skinny. And with these super skinny legs, it's going to be easy for that to get broken off or, or something like that. So... Um, I put grass behind here and um, that's one thing and I would encourage you if you decide that you want to make and design your yard art one of the things you always want to think about is this remember this is going to be outside subject to wind uh, kids playing in the grass to rain thunderstorm whatever the case may be mainly wind so if it gets knocked over you want to make sure you're still good to go and uh, I did some grass on here, and I didn't notice my grass doesn't jut out very, very, very far. Yes, it juts out a little bit, that if this piece were to be knocked over, it would be fine. Um, so you've got to kind of think about those sorts of things, because it doesn't, it doesn't do you a whole lot of good to make a design that's super cute, that people buy, and that, you know, or that you like, or, you know, you want to give us presents, or do paint parties, or whatever the case may be and then it gets damaged in the first windstorm we have, you know. 
that's really discouraging. So take it from somebody who's been there and done that. It's just not a lot of fun. So I'm just putting some grass on here. I'll get a little bit more paint. Okay. Here we go. All right. So I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to put a little bit of grass here. And really, I, I would have liked him with no grass, but that's just not realistic with the, how small his legs are, or her legs. I don't know if it's a him or a her, okay? So, I'm going to show you something here in just a second um, about base coating. Base coating, to me, is my, my least favorite part, um, but, you know, it's kind of, it, everything has to have, there's a reason why you're doing it. You know, so it's not like you can skip it. It's an important part. I usually just kind of rush through it. and I like the shading and the outlining and the highlighting. That's my favorite part. Because that's the part where you kind of really get to see the fruits of your labor. How tall are Christmas trees? The bigger ones are 66 inches. And the smaller ones are 46 inches. So today, uh, I've been working on the 66 inch ones. And it's not that if they're that hard. They're really, I don't think they are. But... You know, you start handling 30 trees in a day, and you've got to handle them a lot to move them from here to there to yonder. After a while, it's kind of like, you know, makes you get tired. But it, I hate, I, don't, I look at it this way. At least I don't have to go to the gym and work out. <laughs> All right, so I got my mop brush. And I think I'm good in terms of everything um, with a base coat, except I need to do the legs. So what I have is a little... I don't know, I guess I'd call it a round brush. It's seen its better days, you can tell, but it's a round brush. And then I've got my little two ounce cups. You can get these at Sam's, I guess Costco, any place like that. I use them a lot just because uh, I need a little holder for stuff. This is just a little temporary paint holder, right? I'm coming in here, I'm just gonna put some little legs on this guy. And you can see I have quite a bit of paint. I hope I don't have so much on here I can't get this stuff to dry. So, because um, I need it to dry so I can show y'all. And I'm not worried right now about getting down in there. That's not my concern at this point. I can always come back and do that with the script liner. Blue water instead of, you could, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh-huh, I had never, honestly, I'd never thought about that. All right, let me go put this under the fan. I'll be right back. drag this over here for you guys while those two things are drying I'm going to show you something um, these are some little uh, lazy Susans that I've had as you can tell for a long time the kid the, today I peeled this part off because I had so much paint on there it's just a little lazy Susan that Bruce bought at uh, Home Depot and then screwed this, uh, I think this is a half inch MDF to the truth, but I don't really know what it is. I use it a lot. So I'm gonna show you something. So let's say you decide you wanna do multiples of something. You wanna do a lot of the same thing. So a while ago, one of the things we were doing, right, was the, um, the little guy sitting down in the bed of grass. So this is, let me count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight of these right here, okay? Got eight of them. Notice I have them stacked here on my Lazy Susan very perfectly, right? So what I'm going to do, I always have gloves. These are just disposable gloves you can get anywhere. I think you can get them at Walmart. I get them at Sam's just because I shop at Sam's a lot. Okay, I'm gonna show you something. So I talked to you a little bit earlier <clears throat> about base coating. 
while those pieces over there that I have so much paint on are drying under the dryer, let me show you what I would do in terms of base coating. This is just a freezer bag and uh, with a roller. This is the light pink number 25. Y'all don't have it in big bottle like I do, but that's all it is, is the light pink, okay? So that's quite a bit of paint, right? I'm going to roller a base coat on here. This is how I do when I have to do a lot of the same thing. Now, you may not, this may not even apply to you at this point. You may say, well, I'm only doing one item at a time. Well, you never know when you're gonna do multiples of the same thing. So I'm doing this. I still have a lot of paint on there. This is just a small roller that you can get at, um, I get mine at Home Depot a lot. If y'all don't know, I live right on Dixie Farm Road, so I have a Home Depot that's very close to me. If you can get them, if you can find them at Walmart or, or wherever, or Lowe's, it doesn't matter. Just whatever store you can find them at, this is what I do. Now, when you watch me do this roller, uh, hopefully, probably one of the first things that's occurring to you is, geez, that's awful fast, and it is. That's why a lot of times if I have to do something, uh, a lot of any one thing, I will use a roller. So I'm gonna roll this around. I'm thinking y'all, I hope, hope y'all can see this. I'm trying to get it where you've got a good view. Okay, so I'm rollering all these sides like this. I'm not gonna roll to this part because this part's gonna be green, right? That's gonna be my grass. But what I am gonna keep doing is rolling all these sides that is gonna be the pink part. So here I go. And you can see if you get good at this, it doesn't take much time to do base coating. Uh, if you're gonna base coat three, it's not gonna take any more time to base coat four or five, basically. And that's kind of how I've always worked. It's the same amount of time dragging the paint out, finding the paint, pouring the paint and all of that, whether you paint one item or six still takes the same amount of time to drag all that stuff out. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here, kind of come back this way, uh, and I'm doing this, I'm gonna go up and down this way. I got a lot of trash over here on the sides. doing the paint. I'm going to come over here and get some more paint. All right. So you can kind of see the idea. I missed a few spots here. I'm going to go back and make sure I fix that. I don't have quite enough paint in this section. So I'm going to load this up right up under the neck. I've missed some. So I'm going to come back in there and put some more paint in there. And I've got my I've got my pink rolled, right? So that's what I would do in this case. Now, I would just pick it up, set it aside, and here you your sides are already done. So this next part is gonna go a lot faster because I'm not worried about the sides anymore right now. Uh yeah, yeah. What do uh, Joyce, what what you mean by uh, what uh, what specs? Oh, liquor store? Are we talking about liquor now? Y'all didn't go. I've, I've been over here working, not paying attention. I need to get with the program over here. All right, so I'm just taking that roller, and I'm coming right close to the edge where I'm going to do the green grass. I I could just go ahead and cover it with the green grass. I'm just showing you guys. Really, there's a there. You can get pretty decently precise with a roller. You pick it up a little bit, kind of edge it down. And all I'm doing is base coating my flamingo. That's all I'm doing. I'm going to come over here. Like so. Got that lazy Susan working. And Janet. 
All right. Here we go. I think I said I started out with eight of these guys, right? And you can see in a pretty short amount of time, I'm going to have them base coated with no problem. The thing, the down, the good side, of, I think the, the uh, good points about a roller is it's fast. There's a downside. When you use a roller, you, you're going to use more paint. It's just the nature of it because you're going to lose a lot of paint in here. Not really lose a lot, but a lot of paint goes into that roller that doesn't, that you're not going to get to use on the piece itself. But um, I roller all the backs of my stuff. I don't brush it because a roller is a lot faster. And remember, I have painted for many years, and so I have to be kind to my right shoulder. My body may be in my 50s, but sometimes my right shoulder is in the 80s, and that's just, in the, uh, that's just because of how many years I've worked it. So, here we go. I am base coating my Flamingo. Yes. So I got those sides done that first go around, so I'm not too worried about that. I've got trash in here, so I'm just take my finger and rub it on the table. Yep. And the thing about this roller is it puts so much paint on there, that's a good thing for a base coat. Okay. Notice, and as you get more and more in this, if you decide to get with the roller, I don't sit here and do this back and forth little strokes. It's all about moving that whole shoulder and that whole arm and uh, yes, you've got to do little strokes in a small area. But other than that, I move my arm a lot. I don't just sit here and do this. That's not going to get you anywhere. You really want to make sure that you're moving back and forth as cross much area as you can, as quick as you can. And that way, you've got your base coat. As you can tell, I've used this roller a little bit. That's between using the roller, using that Lazy Susan, right? Yes, these you can, because I'm painting some, I will have some, I don't know, maybe in the next week or so they'll be out there. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, so here's the thing. Between the roller and that Lazy Susan, you've got a lot of dexterity to move this thing around quickly. Because I think I told you guys, base coating is not my favorite part, so I try to make that go as fast as I can. And um, So if you ever decide you want to take up the roller, you kind of now have an idea. Um, oh, this is what she did when she did it. You know, that's something. If you do a bigger piece, you know, you decide to do something big, you really do want to use a roller on a base coat. Mm -hmm. All right. I should just base coat and eight not still be on the first one. I hear you. I hear you. But you know, the thing about it is, is you really have to think about, you know, as you move forward and you do this, depending on what you're, what you're doing, you really got to think about your time because your time is important. So, uh, now I've just base coated eight of them, and I don't know how long it took, 10 minutes, not too long, and the cool thing is, is I got a lot of paint on there, which is really what I want. So just a little Lazy Susan, as you can get at home, people, I think this was like two or three dollars for this part, and there's just some wood cut out, there you go. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put this back in here. Uh, let, watching Mary makes me nervous, and I don't want to drink. Oh, come on, y'all. And I'm putting this back in here. As you know, this is just a freezer bag. And now I'm ready to go back to those first two. They're not really dry, but I think they're going to be enough that I can illustrate what we're going to do next. Hold on. So what I'm going to 
do with this guy. I am going to shade the grass. I'm going to shade the beak and I'm going to shade the little flower. So on the little flower, this is a seafoam green. So I'm going to, I, I will tell you, this is something I always, not always, but I do a lot. Um, and I would encourage you to kind of play with it as well. I know that my dark green, let me find it, y'all. Let's see, where'd you go, dark green? Here it is. I know that this dark green is too dark. This dark green is called 12 dark green. This one is my seafoam green. I know that I'm not going to care for that on there. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little bit of this with some water. I think I told you I use water quite a bit. Okay, I've got a little bit of water in my seafoam green and some dark green. And I'm just going to do this until I like it, okay? And right now, I don't like that because it's not quite dark enough. But you can see where I'm going with it, right? So if you don't like something, just kind of sit there. That's why I use these cups a lot because the cups give me the ability to use just a little bit of paint for something that I need that day. Okay, so I think I'm getting there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I've got a small shader here. This one is a number 10, okay? So I think I told y'all you really, everything about this is so wrong, but this is what I do. I make those bristles fan out, make them fan pretty good like that. So I've got me a little bit of paint and I'm gonna do this. And I'm just gonna do some shading like that. Notice I'm kind of bearing down and then I, when I get here, I'm picking up in the air. That's all I'm doing, I'm picking up in the air. I'm gonna come here, pick it up, kind of come back over here, pick that up, do like that. Now, what I would do is I would take this brush and I would do just one whisk this way, one that way, one that way, like that, like that. Now, remember I told you that I thought that the number 12 dark green is too dark for the shading, and, it, and, I, and I still stand by that. But watch what I'm going to do here. I've got that number 12, and y'all know you can get these little taster spoons. I use I don't know how many of them at the restaurant supply. In fact, I even did a video on that. So she can't see it, let's see. Is that better? Let's see, hold on a second, because I want y'all to see. Is that better? Okay, so here we go. So I have the seafoam green, I think it's number eight. I've mixed some um, dark uh, green with it for my shading, and now I've got some dark, number 12 dark green. So I think y'all can tell where I'm going with this. All right, now I'm gonna use a script liner. Although this thing doesn't look like it got clean too good on the last go around. I don't know who was on brush cleaning duty. I didn't think they did too good of a job. So what I'm doing is I'm coming over here. My goal at this point is to fill this up down here in, the, in that very bottom where the bit of the CNC came through to make that itch. That's my goal, okay? So I'm gonna come up here and do one, just a little bit. I'm not doing a whole one, just maybe a half of one here, there, and yonder, so to speak. But just remember, you could, whatever color you choose to do, you could use the same, uh, you don't have to use green, you could do the same thing with purple or pink or, I wouldn't put pink, cause he's pink, but you know, uh, whatever you wanted to do, you could do that. I think I will do, probably should have already done this, but I didn't. I will do a little bit of yellow in the middle. Okay, not a whole lot. Let me put some yellow right here. 
right there. Okay, so I've got that. Now I made a mess over here. I guess I was um, uh, shaking up the dark green bottle. And I made a mess over here, which I know y'all can relate. Nobody's ever made a mess, right? Says no one ever. Okay, so I got me another shader. This is a number 16. I do like the fact of using the darker green. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now this isn't very, very dry. As y'all know, I put a lot of paint on here. So in the morning, I'm gonna have to touch this thing up. But uh, for purposes of what we're doing tonight, I wanna make sure I give you guys a, a full uh, you know, experience here about how to shade and what to do with all that. If you're not sure about what to shade or where to shade, it's always good to start with that outside cut where, wherever it is. In this case, it's right here. Notice I'm just starting with the outside and I'm going to kind of come in here. And if this were drier, it would be better, but it's not. So it is the way it is. So I'm going to do this gonna come in here and cover up my boo-boo. I'm gonna do like this. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna come back like so. And like that. So I would probably do something like this. Okay, come over here, here. Now, I think I am ready to do a little shading up here on this guy's bill. And then we're not too, too far away from being done with him. I'm going to have to put a lot of black on him down here. So what I would do is I would come in here. He's got like this, like so. Okay, I know that, I say I know, I don't know if I know now, but I think I know. I need some more pink on my circle. So what I'm gonna do, and this pink is really, really thick. It, uh, it's always like that. I don't know why it's always so thick, but it is. Okay. So I'm going to thin this out a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use that script liner of mine. Why am I going to use the script liner at this point? Because in this particular case, now my son is the CNC operator, okay? Uh, his name is uh, Bruce Jr. We call him Bub, right? And uh, I know that he does a good job running the CNC, but sometimes he has a hard time getting those lines not to be too deep, but to be deep enough because it is a sweet spot. These lines look a little deep to me. So what I'm going to do, I put a little water in there and I'm going to make sure I cover that really, really, really well because obviously I don't want any wood to show through there. That's not going to be what I'm about. I'm going to try to make this look as obviously as pretty as I can. That's, that's part of what the whole thing is about. So I'm just filling it in. And I just kind of got the paint to recess down in there by really just by putting A, enough paint on there, but also some water in that paint. Okay. It's kind of like making pancakes, you know. You get too much water in here, just go ahead and put some more paint in here. So if you get it too watery, put some more paint in here and then you kind of play with it till you get it the way you want it. I saw a thing, I think it was on Facebook and it said, mixing pancakes for my family. Okay, you put the pancake mix in, you put the water in, you stir it up. It's too runny, you put more pancake mix in, you stir it, it's too thick. You put more water in, you stir it, it's too runny. At the end, everybody has 159 pancakes instead of six. It kind of feels that way. You know, so hopefully that won't be the case when you're having to add water to this, but you get my meaning. So I'm just going back in here and filling in that with some paint. And 
going back like so. Now, this is his little wing. So I'm going to do this. Because I have that script liner and it's got some paint in there. I know I can make that paint go way down in there and recess into there. And that's what I want. So because he's do, he is his body is basically in that dark uh, fuchsia shading, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of come along and give him a little bit of help in terms of I'm going to give him a little bit of color. Gonna, what you might even kind of think about as a highlight, right? And I'm not trying to make it perfect. I'm just trying to give it a little bit of a lightness here instead of so much dark pink. Okay, so he's starting to look, getting better about where I want him to be. Now, I'm still using this script liner and I've got some black paint. And because I can tell that Bub was having a hard time with this machine right here, this looks a little bit um, etched down in there pretty deep. Put some water in here. Okay. Okay. So here's my script liner. I'm putting quite a bit of paint on there because obviously at this point I've got to cover up that paint, don't I? Yes, I do. It'd be interesting if you guys could kind of comment and let me know how you feel about the length of the video. Um, in the, because it's kind of like, you know, six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. If, I don't want to rush through it because obviously I want you to have everything you need to be successful. But at the same time, I try to kind of move along a little bit so it's not so long. Thank goodness for fast forward and rewind, y'all. You get to a part, you're like, okay, I already know that part, you can fast forward. So what I'm doing is I am, now remember this whole time that we're doing this part on this little guy, the, the uh, flamingo that's sitting down in the bed of grass, he's over there under the dryer. So when he gets over here, I'm hoping he's gonna be pretty dead gum dry. We can, I can work on them. But yeah, let me know in the comments if I need to speed up or if I need to keep going as slow as I am. I could go faster, but hey, try not to go too fast because I want to make sure that, you know, I'm explaining everything. So what I would do, I've got my black legs the way I want them, but I would come out here and I would give my grass some more, uh, some black outlines is what I would do. You don't necessarily have to do it this way if you think that's that's just too dark. You know, you don't have to. And again, it's all about that script liner. I think I've told the story. Uh, my mother-in-law was the one who got me started on the script liner because she she uh, pointed out I could <laughs> no faster. <laughs> okay. She pointed out I could not afford the paint pens that we were using. And I was like, yeah, because we were going through a lot of paint pens. Because paint pens can be very expensive, you know. So, anyway. Okay, so I've got this guy almost where I want him, with the exception of I gotta put an eye up here, right? Now I'm gonna try something. I don't think it's gonna work because I think it's too dark. I mean, it's too wet. But I want y'all to see it anyway. If it messes up, you'll, you'll kind of still understand. A lot of times I'll put an eye here. And then what I will do is I will come back and give them a little bit of eyelashes. Who doesn't like eyelashes? Got to like eyelashes. Okay. Just a little bit of something. Okay. Not a lot. I'm pretty happy with how everything has turned out so far. The only thing, and this is important, I think it's important, because I do this on everything I do. Uh, get some lids over here. 
The only thing about this guy that I'm not feeling right now is just the fact that I don't have any white highlights on him. So I'm going to put some paint, a little bit of a water in here. Got my stir stick. I'm going to stir it up a little bit. Now, because he's so wet, can you change shaders in size? Please tell us. Okay. Fair enough. Good question. I used the small one on this one. Let's see. The small one, I'm calling the small one as a number 10. Then I used on the green over here, I used the number 10 on this one and on this one. On the green one, used a 16 on the green. A 10 is small to me. Now there's shaders a lot smaller than that, but that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so yeah. Um, what I would do at this point, I'm almost done with this guy. I'm just gonna put some white highlights on him and I just kinda wanna show you how different it looks and it doesn't take but just literally sometimes 15 or 20 seconds to do it. It's not, I'm not spending a lot of time on this. But I am gonna kinda come in here and I'm gonna brighten it up a little bit, right? And over here, I'd probably just do a couple of dots of white. Call that good. Over here, a couple of white highlights. And then I would come over here next to that pink outline. And again, I'm not putting a lot there, just a little bit. Now, down on the grass, I'm gonna get a little bit more here a little heavier hand, so to speak, because I got a bigger area to cover. Now, I have these legs, they're super, super wet, but uh, I wanna kinda show you my thought about them. Let me do it this way. <clears throat> what I would do, Oh, hey, y'all, I just dipped it in the black paint. That wasn't very smart. Hey, Paolo, how are you? Uh, we are having fun painting a, um, what do you call it? Pink flamingo. Okay, so I'm just gonna kinda come in here and I'm gonna do this. Now, here's the thing, I always think when you're doing something like this, less is better. I'm not trying to make this a really, really dark or, or thick, I'm sorry, thick, thick line. I'm just trying to give it a little bit of definition. That's all I'm doing. Not a lot of paint at all, okay? All right. So here we go, y'all. He's super cute. <clears throat> and we didn't spend a whole lot of time on him. I don't know how long we've been on the video, but uh, there's my pink flamingo standing up, ready to go. Still super wet, but you get the idea. I'm going to stand him up a little bit more. Hopefully y'all can see. Love the eyelashes, right? Okay, now let me go get the other guy. Okay, so this other guy, he has been drying, thankfully, because that's really what I wanted. And uh, I'm gonna use my number 16 shader on this beak, because this beak is kind of large. And this is the number 16. And like I said, a number 10 shader, that's pretty small for me, probably because most everything I paint is kind of big. Ah, oh, thank you, Janet. Okay, thank you, Lynn. All right, so I think I've told y'all before, you're really not supposed to do this, but I bear down on my brush and make it fan out. Then you kind of come here. And I would just do this with this guy. Not trying to make it look perfect or anything. And then come up. When you come up around here and then you go up, that's how you get this, this crescendo down here. Where I think that's what you want. This whole thing, I'm gonna kind of make it the, this color. There we go. And I'm going to show you something here in a minute, what we're going to do uh, as far as um, I'm going to put a little orange on there, make him a little different than the other guy. Again, I'm using the 16 shader. 
dark green number 12 right here. All right, thank you, Janet, for joining us. All right, here we go. I'm gonna put some of this dark green on here and I'm gonna take this all the way close to the body. Okay. Kind of coming back. I'm running out of paint, y'all. Here we go. And I'm just doing this. Okay. Here we go. Now, I've got him the way I want, I think. Like I told you a little earlier, I'm going to put some more pink in here. I need a little more pink, and I'm going to put some water with it. I'm going to pick up that script liner, and what am I going to do? I'm going to take that pink all the way down into the etched line, the CNC etched line on all my circles. I'm going to stir that really good. Okay. All right. I'm going to pick up this script liner. Where did you go? Here we go. I'm going to go to town here. Now, the thing about a script liner is you can see the more you sit here and go back and forth, the more you're going to load it. Now, I've got a lot of paint on there right now. And, of course, right now, then, as, as the more it drips off, the less paint I'm going to have on the brush, which is fine. But the point is, for such a little bitty brush, you can get a lot of paint on there. But you cannot do that if your paint is gummy. It has to have quite a bit of water in it, okay? And notice I'm just kind of going around and around till I feel like <clears throat> I've got enough paint where I want it. And then I would probably do this, just kind of come up here, give it a little bit of definition in here, 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 here. Just kind of creating that outline of the flamingo. This is his neck, right? There we go. Now, Somehow I got some dripped water here, so I'm just going to kind of dab that up. All right, let's go back to my script liner. The script liner is my friend because it does all kinds of things. So I've got some black in here that I'm going to do on my eyes. And again, remember, I already have some water in there. There you go. So I'm going to kind of come back here, here. So, this guy's gonna come and have some black down here where the grass is. I'm gonna outline that grass. Okay. 
And I think I've said before, I kind of have a heavy hand. It's probably just the way I am. I've always painted yard art and I've always felt like it's needed to be seen from afar. So you gotta really have a lot of paint on there. So when you're driving down the street, you can kind of see what you're looking at. So I've always kind of done it that way. There's a lot of painters who have a very light hand. I love that. I think it's super awesome. I've tried to have a light hand. Nah, not so much. It just doesn't seem to be on the cards. So I tend to put a lot of paint on everything. But you don't have to. You know, you can totally do your own thing and it'll be beautiful. Okay. So I'm going to do this, put a little bit more black there. Okay. Now one thing I, I didn't do on the other guy that I am going to do on this guy that I think is a good idea. I'm going to break out some shading orange. Shading orange is number 17 break out some shading orange. I can tell you now this shading orange does not, it's too gummy. So I'm going to put some water in it. I bet on if you watch this video again or when you stop watching, you're going to say all she did was put water in everything. <laughs> it just seems like pretty much that's all I've done tonight. Okay. Now watch what happens with the beak uh, when I put this orange on there. Just kind of to me, it's going to really give it a pop. Okay. Not saying you have to do this, but I, I, I'm a fan of orange and yellow together. It's just what I, I like to see. And then I would just do this. Okay. And we're almost done with this guy. I'm gonna put some white on him. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put some white on this guy. Like so. I'm going to kind of come back in here and fill this part in right here that I think needs a little bit of what I would call cleaning up. Almost done with this guy. I think he's cute. Who doesn't love a flamingo? Gotta love a flamingo. All right, y'all. Here's my baby. There he is. I think he's super cute. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. Hope you feel like you got a lot out of it. Um, sorry it took so long. I know we've been going like an hour and 10 minutes. My bad. Um, but I didn't want to leave anything out. I know in a video y'all can push and go do whatever you want and then do fast forward, rewind, whatever. But at least I have it out there for everybody to see that. And uh, I'll be back, I think it's Thursday night, doing a pizza slice and the other flamingo. So it won't be near as long as tonight's video because there's pizzas, not pizza, I'm sorry, watermelon. Although the argument could be made that it does look like a pizza, but either way, uh, I'm going to do that on um, uh, Thursday. Thank you, Lynn, so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Debbie. I love uh, being with you guys. Debbie's known me for years. She knows that I love teaching. And um, I like... Um, well, it's all about the end product, and it, and it is an hour and 10 minute video, but hey, what can we do? Uh, so I hope you guys will see me on Thursday. We're gonna be doing the watermelon slice and the other uh, standing flamingo. So, uh, what do you do to the back of the bird to keep it from getting, getting water in it? Hmm. So you mean on the back, back here, this back like this, uh, Jan? I paint the back, I just haven't done that. Uh, 
but and we'll talk about that and maybe I'll do that in the video on Thursday I'll have these two pieces they'll be super dry and I'll show you what I do on painting the back uh, I usually just use earth tone colors or neutral colors whatever the paint shop happens to have everybody that sells paint knows me so if they have oops paint or they have something nobody in the world would buy they save it for me and I'll, but I'll do that on Thursday. I'll save the backs and I'll paint these on, on Thursday and show you. It'll take me literally two minutes to show you that. So, hey, thank you guys so much. And I uh, hope y'all have a great evening. And I'll see you guys on Thursday. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.